Hey, folks, welcome to another edition of the Small Business Show. How are you, Dave? I'm doing well, Shannon. How are you? I'm doing really well. I'm hanging in there, That's making it. the best of the situation. <laughs> I, yeah, you know, it's um, I am I am not someone who I, I well two things I've I've found that my you know greeting or sign off with people is some version of stay safe, stay healthy, yep. and stay productive enough to pass the time. And I've I've very intentionally changed my language. I no longer say the word busy. I stay, I say productive because it's so I much like better than being busy. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's intentional, which I really like. And, uh, cause we, we kind of rage against <laughs> being busy here on the show, right? We right. always talk about productivity. So I think that's really a good thing to do and a mindful way to think about it. Yeah. So that's when, cool. when somebody asks, you know, what are you up to? Well, I'm productive today, you know, or I've had a productive yeah, day yeah. or I'm, I'm getting a lot done, but, but I, I've, I've, really gotten to the point where I basically don't say, ah, it was a busy day. Ah, busy. Right. Mm, I don't think so. I love it. I, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm not a, not That's a big cool. fan. Of busy. Yeah, I'm excited about our guest today. We're going to learn about some alternative ways that you can finance, pay your debt off, uh, build long-term wealth. And that I think is a really unique thing. And a lot of small business owners right now, especially yeah. that are looking for ways to weather this uh, coronavirus storm and make it through on their, you know, keep your cash flow going. Uh, I think it's really a valuable time to have uh, Daniel Blue on uh, from uh, Quest Education to talk about that. I agree. I agree. I also agree that our first sponsor, Linode, is a place that you want to visit. In fact, you want to make sure you go to Linode, L-I-N-O-D-E dot com slash S-B-S, because that's the link that will get you a $20 credit to start with Linode. Now, you might say, what do I get with a $20 credit? Well, I'll tell you, because Linode... Linode creates a, an infrastructure for you to set up a server. In fact, they don't create it. They do create it. They've created it. So you don't have to think about what it would take to set up a server for your business. They've already done all that work. You just go to linode.com slash SPS. You pick the type of server that you want to set up. It might be WordPress. It might be a VPN server, or it might be a bare bones server that you add your own stuff to. That's totally fine. It's totally flexible. And speaking of that 20 bucks, you get that credit. Well, their lowest price server is a $5 a month server. So it really is a valuable thing. In fact, it could be four months of value for you or longer if you're not leaving the server spun up all the time, depending on what you're doing. You might have, of course, if you have a WordPress server, you'd want that up all the time. But if you're doing some development work or whatever and you're offloading it, you don't need it running all the time. And so you can even stretch that out even more, of course. Hopefully you'll stretch it out even longer and then they get to start making some money while you're making money. And that's where everybody wins. You got to go check this out. You you definitely are going to want a server for your business for something and go check out what Linode has because you get to test it all out for free. So check out Linode, L-I-N-O-D-E dot com slash SBS to start with that $20 credit and our thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. You got anything else? Uh, any more thoughts on that, Mr. Mr. Gene there? I'm ready to go, man. All right, well, I am ready to go. He is Shannon Jean. I am Dave Hamilton. And this is episode 272 of the Small Business Show. I think a lot of people that are in sales that do really well, they automatically think that they're going to be a great manager. And then they automatically think that they're probably going to be an amazing business owner. And I say that because, you know, I thought the same thing and I learned some, some, some trials along the way. I, I failed. I made some mistakes along the way. Um, and, and when you are selling and you're just worrying about yourself and putting food on the table and making sales for yourself, that's a whole different ball game when you actually are having to manage a team and, and inspire a team and, and communicate with your, your teammates and, and get the most out of them. And then when you take it a step further, when you're actually, you know, writing checks and, and you know, being involved in payroll, being involved in decisions that affect people's livelihoods um, and, and actually being the captain of the ship and, and running things. It's just a different it's a different ball game. Hey, 
Hey, Dave, you know, cash flow, access to capital, and building wealth, right? Those three topics, uh, we talk about them. You just defined all... everything we ever talk about. <laughs> That's right. All the time on the Small Business Show. And we're always interested in learning more about increasing those, you know, better cash flow, access to more capital, and ultimately creating a long term system for building wealth. Uh, I think is any part of a small business owner's uh, success. So joining us today is Daniel Blue from Quest Education to discuss ways to manage capital, pay off debt, and build wealth for your retirement. And I'm really excited to have him here. I'm really interested to learn about what Quest does. Thank you so much for joining us today, Daniel. We really appreciate it. Hey, Shannon. Thank you so much for for having me. I know you guys have been at this for a number of years, so I'm super grateful that I uh, have the opportunity to be on your guys' show. Oh yeah, it's it's great. Absolutely, and, yeah. and finance is such an important aspect. Um, you know, th- th- we talk about passion and doing this and doing that, but you know, if you can't pay your bills and if you can't get your debt paid off and if you can't build wealth, what's the what's the purpose, right? Um, so I'm I'm excited to learn about uh, Quest. So so talk about what Quest Education does and then how you got started in the finance uh, industry. Yeah, so what we focus here on uh, on, on a, a level of being able to help out entrepreneurs. So you know, the ideal person that we can show a ton of value to is somebody that is wanting to start a business, or you know, maybe they're an existing entrepreneur. Uh, they've got uh, some kind of LLC or S corp. They don't have any W two employees, so maybe they're a solopreneur or consultant. And if they've got this side hustle, if they're an entrepreneur and they don't have W-2 employees, the IRS allows this person to take advantage of some really sweet retirement accounts that a lot of CPAs, a lot of financial advisors, for whatever reason, do not bring up. And these retirement accounts can unlock the door to a lot of different ways to get money in in, in the pockets of of the entrepreneur. So we pull the curtain back and, and help these people get creative with their finances. And as you mentioned, maybe it's helping them pay off some debt. Maybe they need some working capital for their new business or existing business. Maybe they're just sick and tired of their dry, expensive mutual funds, and they, they want to get uh, a little more creative with the retirement accounts, maybe invest in real estate or some other alternative investments. So just really helping entrepreneurs understand some of the options that they might not know about when it comes to their retirement accounts. That's great. And why aren't you know these kinds of things promoted maybe a little more by the uh, maybe a, for lack of a better word, traditional, you know, uh, financial planning industry or something like that. Is it just because they're not experienced with them as, as a, I mean, you're a small business owner yourself. Is you, is that how you kind of learned more about this thing? Got to follow the money, right? If you look at Wall Street, Wall Street is going to make anywhere from maybe one, two percent a year uh, when it comes to managing mutual funds, managing portfolios, right? So if someone has a hundred thousand in an IRA with Fidelity or uh, TD Ameritrade and they have a financial advisor, they're probably paying one to two percent a year in fees on that account. And Wall Street makes money when people have their money in, in the stock market, right? So if someone has money in a retirement account and they use that money to start their own business or they use that money to invest into a rental property or use that money to flip a home, Wall Street's not making money. That's yeah, sure. that, that, that's, that's really what it comes down to. It, it does not make Wall Street money. So they're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking to their clients about it. Yeah, it's fascinating. That's good. Makes so, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, how, and so, how did you get started in the in in this business? And then, uh, I know, or I believe, you know, you were worked within the industry, and then you started Quest on yourself. Talk, talk about both those things. How you got started, and then the impetus to go out on your own and and start Quest Education. You know, so for me, my background has always been sales. Uh, I got into the sales game at 18 years old. Uh, I started selling real estate services, real estate coaching over the phone. And I made some some really good money at it over the years. And through having conversations with people over the phone, talking to real estate investors, they would tell me that they use their retirement account. They use their IRA to flip a property. They use their 401k to purchase a rental home. And I thought that was pretty cool at that time because I always thought that retirement accounts were only going to be used for stocks, mutual funds. I didn't know that you can invest directly into real estate. So that seed got planted in my head you know, about 10 years ago. And for me, I just had my head down 
selling on the phone, doing my thing and moving up the the ladder, right? I started off and for the people that uh, are listening that are in sales doing cold calling, right? You, you start off with calling reprint leads. You're calling old leads um, and you're yep. setting appointments. You're getting hung up on, you're calling 300 <laughs> people a day, right? So it's just smiling and dialing. And I was able to work my way up to eventually start closing and eventually start running a sales team and, and a sales floor and, and just moving my way up. Um, but I think some people can probably resonate with this. There's a point in time where you sell something and as you learn more about it, maybe you don't feel the same way that you felt in the very beginning when you sold it and you didn't know too much about the product or the fulfillment or just kind of some of the behind the scenes. And for me, I was making good money, but I really hit a, a point where I'm like, man, this is not what I want to do the rest of my life. Like I'm making six figures, I'm making good money, but you know, what I'm selling, like I don't truly believe in it. I don't a hundred percent believe in this product. And uh, for me, that's when I, I wanted to make a change and I wanted to sell something that I could really get behind. And uh, that's where getting involved in the self-directed retirement space uh, came into play um, because I've always been fascinated by stocks, real estate, retirement accounts, investments, things of that nature. And I like talking to people. I like solving problems. And I really saw an avenue where I could solve some big, big problems for people in the self-directed space. Um, so I'm, I'm 30 years old and, and I got involved in the self-directed industry um, at about 24 years old. So about six years I've, I've been in this space now. Oh, that's great. That's, that's interesting. So do uh, are small business owners like coming to you and finding you know companies like Quest Education when they have specific problems, or are are you in the track? I mean, we talk a lot about you know board of advisors, banker, attorney, planners, all that kind of stuff. Uh, how, when does Quest, when do you kind of get in there, or are you constantly having to go out and find customers? Which which you work? Yeah, so I mean, I think if you can have a machine built up to where you never have to make outbound calls, outbound yeah. emails, outbound, you know, um, knocking on doors, sending out mailers. I mean, if you can get people just calling you, that's that's a great place to be in. And uh, yes, we do have some inbound calls. We do have some people reach out to us organically um, where they see us uh, online. And, and we don't have to reach out to them. But for the most part, we've, we've been able to build the business over the years by um, incorporating some of those same techniques um, that I just talked to you about when I first got started in sales, where um, we are able to identify a list of customers, people that are entrepreneurs. Um, and then our staff uh, reaches out to those people, gets them on the phone um, and, and finds out where we can build value, where, where we can actually help these people. Um, so most of our business is, is from the outbound calling. Um, I've got shoot probably about a thousand customers that we've been able to help over the years. Um, wow. we don't have a lot of people in Las Vegas. I mean, we might have 30 customers in Las Vegas. So we've got clients in all 50 States and, uh, you know, everything for the most part that we do is over the phone. So to directly answer your question, most of it's outbound, um, but over the last couple of years, we've made a more concentrated effort to do social media marketing, do some videos, do some podcasts. Um, I'm trying to get out and, and speak a lot more and, and, and just building the creating a brand where you know yeah, we can attract great. people as well. Yeah, so this awesome. is interesting because it, you it, we hear from a lot of folks, and of course we have a lot of listeners who are in the the realm of you know I was an employee, I worked somewhere, and then I started my own business. And certainly in every one of those cases, something that you learned being an employee would naturally just sort of by osmosis transfer in because it's you. But with with what you've done here, you really took those lessons that you learned and honed and and really excelled at as an employee and leveraged those for this business you've created so that you, you didn't you didn't ever have to kind of reset back to zero. You're you're leveraging these skills that you've been you've been building all throughout your career as an employee and now as a business owner. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I do truly believe that, and, and it depends on the service or product that you're, you're promoting. Um, but I do sure. feel like there's a lot of value in, in the two part sales, um, right. You have someone that opens the call, someone that makes that initial contact, someone that schedules the appointment, um, and, and making sure that they're scheduling solid appointments, making sure that the appointment that they're scheduling is someone that's going to pick up the phone. And for that to happen, the person on the other end of the phone has to know why they're on the phone. Like, what solution are you going to help me? 
with, you know, what is it for, what is in it for me? Right. That's what these the, the clients are thinking, right. rightfully so. Yeah. Um, so it's a matter of just really communicating the right way and, and making sure that we're putting everything out on the table and the clients know exactly what we're going to do and how we're going to help them. And then, you know, the person that uh, actually calls the, per- the, the client for the scheduled appointment has to present the right way. Right. And, and you have to leave people in a position where you're, you're giving them um, a good taste in their mouth. You know, they have the warm and fuzzies. They know what they're moving right. forward with. You're solving problems. So, yeah, I mean, uh, back in the day when we sold a completely different service, you know, it was real estate coaching. Um, obviously, it's night and day different what we do now. But, yes, there, there are some of the same similarities in terms of the model. Um, we just pivoted and, and we're in a completely different industry. But there are some similar characteristics. So I, I feel like to kind of tug on this thread a little bit here, you mentioned two part sales. This is not something that is a natural thing for most entrepreneurs to even consider, let alone, you know, institute in their businesses. Right. Because most entrepreneurs start, they have to do it all themselves because that's kind of how it is. And then breaking away from that model, even if it's you know, like some a lot of entrepreneurs, of course, realize, OK, I've got to diversify my my company. And, you know, now I'll hand off the sales to that person. I'll hand off the sales to this person. Very rarely do we hear from folks that that actually adopt this two part sales thing. Any I, I know you just kind of gave us sort of an overview. Any specifics in terms of coordinating a team in that regard? You know, if if you break it down, someone that opens a conversation, someone that schedules the appointment, you know, that, that person that, that has that responsibility, you know, they have to have a few characteristics, right? They have to be able to take a lot of rejection, right? They have to be yeah. able to yeah. be open to that because that's, what's going to happen a lot, right? You know, uh, being, being in a conversation where you get hung up on calling 20 people straight and getting nothing but a voicemail, um, being on the phone with somebody and thinking that you're going to help them. And then you can't, um, there's just a lot of letdowns in, in that position, but then there's a lot of satisfaction in, in really helping people and seeing somebody that you set up actually move forward and, and, and you change their life. So, you know, that, that position is, is really, really the, the lifeline of a business because they're the, they're the ones on the front lines. They're the ones that are drumming up that business. They're, they're the ones that are yeah. calling. And uh, so that, that person has to be somebody that's hungry, has to be somebody that's willing to take rejection um, they, they have to be a go-getter, right? You, you have to be willing to put in the work, um, and, and actually call these people and reach out to them. Um, so that, that position to me, yes, they need to be somebody that's good at sales, good at communicating. Um, but you can teach somebody how to communicate and what to say and how to say it. It's hard to teach somebody how to work. It's, it's hard to teach somebody how to take rejection. <laughs> yeah. So that's an understatement. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, and, and the, the, just to not let that get buried, what you just said, it's hard to teach somebody how to take rejection. It's so true. I, you know, you can sit down with somebody and say, look, if you're in sales, if you make 20 phone calls and you get 19 no's, that's a successful day. And, and uh, logically people can understand that, but emotionally when you're in it, if you don't believe it and know it, you're not going to make it to call number 15, let alone call number 20 when you're actually going to get that. Yes. So, yeah. 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 Very, that's very, interesting. very true. Yeah. And so along the same lines here, you posted recently on LinkedIn and it really stood out to me because we've talked about this on the show before, but, and, and I, to paraphrase, I, you know, you, you said just because you killed it in sales, working as an employee doesn't automatically mean you will be a great employer. And, you know, it just really resonated with me. What was the impetus for that that post? And can you expand on that concept a little bit for me? Yeah, I mean, for, for me, um, I'm a natural salesperson. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy having a conversation with somebody and listening. And, and I'm, a, I'm a natural problem solver. That's probably why there's some times where I... I, I uh, cause tension with me and the wife because she says something and I'm immediately trying to solve the problem. <laughs> that like, never happens no, in my house. No, <laughs> dude. I'm, I'm just trying to vent. Um, so I, I, I'm working on that, right? But That is a lesson to learn. That sometimes <laughs> oh, people yeah. just need to vent. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we yeah. have to be better at having um, empathy and, and understanding to, uh, to, to recognize yeah. that. 
but we could probably do yeah. a separate podcast on, on that in itself. Yeah, um, totally. that's great. That's why I bring it up because I, I, I face that same problem. You know, we're always looking to solve problems and do yep, things. So yeah, that's for really sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think uh, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs or I think a lot of people that are in sales that do really well, they automatically think that they're going to be a great manager. And then they automatically think that they're probably going to be an amazing business owner. And I say that because, you know, I thought the same thing and I <laughs> learned some, some, some trials along the way. I, I failed. I made some mistakes along the way. Um, yeah. and, and when you are selling and you're just worrying about yourself and putting food on the table and, and making sales for yourself, that's a whole different ball game when you actually are having to manage a team and, and inspire a team and, and communicate with your, your teammates and, and get the most out of them. And then when you take it a step further, when you're actually, you know, writing checks and, and you know, being involved in payroll, being involved in decisions that affect people's livelihoods um, and, and actually being the captain of the ship and, and running things, it's just a different, it's a different ball game. You, you have to, um, you know, really, really understand the different roles and, and be okay with it. Um you know, like the sports, you know, there's some really talented uh, people that played on football and basketball teams, but then they're just not leaders, right? But they can put right. up points, they can produce, but can they lead the team? Sure. It's two different things. Yeah, that's huge, yep. man. Uh, just, and and I see that a lot, you know, where people just constantly kind of hit a wall and uh, it, it is important to recognize, and maybe you have to surround yourself with someone else that can be that kind of leader. It doesn't mean you can't still, you know, own the business and be involved in it. Uh, but um, that that's it's really some good advice to analyze that. Um, th- talking about your business a little more, you know, w- we're going through this crazy time right now. The you know, when, while we're recording this, the economy is still you know basically shut down uh, with this COVID nineteen thing, and I I, I think that. That's why I was ex- I was excited to have you on because I know so many businesses are going to be looking for capital or looking for it right now to to survive through this and to try to expand because there's going to be a lot of opportunities out there. Um, what's one of the barriers to to getting businesses to ad- adopt your your program, if you will, to embrace it? And and how do you guys you know go through it? Is, is it is it, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but, but this, I'm sure you hit those barriers and you have to explain, you know, here's the benefits that, you know, overcome the risks and that kind of thing. How, how does it work? You know, I think the best way to explain it is in order for someone to want to make a change, they, they really have to know exactly where they stand, right? Like the example I'll give right now, I think this is relevant to everyone listening right now, going to the grocery store is a pain in the butt. And, and I'd use a more colorful word. Um, but it's just, it's a pain in the neck right now. No one wants to go to the grocery store, but you have to. Um, I mean, you can order some things online, but, you know, at least for us, there's just certain things that we have to go into the grocery store for. So before we go to the grocery store and we make a decision, you know, we take inventory of, of our pantry, our, our, our refrigerator, you know, our fridge, what's inside, what do we need, right? And we make a list and then we go to the store and we make some decisions, right? Well, same thing with our money. Like before you make a change with your account, with your money, or you move your retirement somewhere, or you do something different, you need to know where you stand to begin with. And there's a lot of people out there that don't know where they stand with their IRAs and their 401ks. You know, if you ask the average American, hey, how much are you paying in fees for your retirement account? Most people are going to be like, "Uh, I'm not paying any fees, or they're going to say the wrong answer. Then if you follow up with, okay, what, what kind of returns are you averaging with your account? They're, they're not going to know. So if you don't know what your investments are doing, how are you going to know whether or not to make a change? And if you know you need to make a change, how will you know what kind of change you need to make unless you take inventory of your finances? So it starts with, where are you today with your finances? What does that look like today? And, and that's where we start with a lot of people. That's cool. That's where the education part of your business name comes in, right? Yeah. And, and it's yeah. just solving problems, right? It's not, hey, let's get on the phone. Like, for example, I'm, I'm insurance licensed. Um, I don't get on the phone and start selling term insurance or annuities, right? It's it's the same concept with, with our staff. It's, hey, what, what are some challenges you're going through right now? You know, we were talking to somebody here recently that had you know, a uh, line of credit, they had some debt where they're paying like 15% interest on their debt Ooh. and their retirement account is making them about 5% a year. Well, if you're making 5% of a year on your money on one side and on the other side, you're losing 15% because of the debt, you're losing money faster than you're making money. And if there is a way to access the money in your retirement with no penalties and no taxes to pay off that high interest rate debt, 
right? Once the, the person understands that's even viable, that's even a possibility. It's a no brainer for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. No, that, I yeah. think it's great. I love it. So 15% is a heck of a vig too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. no good. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So ha- have you seen, you know, uh, I mean, we've all been impacted by the, the coronavirus and shutdown of the economy. And I mean, have you have you and your team, have you had to implement changes in how you operate and how you're, you know, talking to businesses and solutions you're trying to come up with them? I know there's a lot of, you know, uh, I don't want to use the word panic, but I'm going to uh, with people just, you know, trying to survive and get through this stuff until things turn around. And then the second part of this is. How, what do you think this recovery is going to look like once we get uh, get going again? Well, you know, I'm going to answer that three different ways. Number one, we're impacted as a business because, you know, we're, we're all working remote right now. Uh, right. I've got a staff of about 13 employees and uh, I was used to seeing their, their lovely faces every single day at the office, right? It was just walk down the hall. Hey, where are we at with this? And, and now I got to draw up, uh, I got to write up this huge email to ask questions. So it's just adjusting to communication and, and Zoom calls and Gmail chats and, uh, you know, just a different way of communicating. So there's definitely, you know, every business out there is having to adjust. Um, and then, you know, number two, when it comes to conversations with people, um, there's just the conversations we're having are a lot longer. Um, oh. people right now want to talk and, and they, they want to talk about their, their, their challenges and, and ways that we can help them. Um, you know, anyone that has an IRA or 401k, um, obviously the CARES Act impacts them in some way, shape or form. Um, if they've been impacted by, uh, COVID-19, because the CARES Act says if you've been impacted by COVID-19, you know, you can take up to a hundred thousand dollars out of your retirement account with no penalties. And as long as you pay yourself back within three years, there's no taxable event. Um, that that's huge. That's never really been, uh, been done. Right. Um, and then I also have people that I've talked to, I was talking to someone the other day and they're like, Hey, um, I, I want to be able to do something different with my retirement account. Do I qualify for the cares act? Um, but this person hasn't been impacted. In fact, their business is essential and they're working even more. Um, so they wouldn't qualify for the cares act, but since they're an entrepreneur, um, you know, they, they do qualify for what's called a solo 401k and solo 401k is an IRS approved retirement account that allows you to access the money in that plan with no penalties, no taxes. So it's almost like a, a Swiss army knife. You can just do so many cool things with this account. And uh, so really it's just understanding where people are coming from and, and how we can help them. Because what you just said is very true. There's a lot of people that are worried right now. A lot of people that are anxious that are not sleeping as much and that are just stressed thinking about, you know, their finances now and, and where they're going to be um, in, in the foreseeable future. And, and that's the problem is we don't know what the future looks like. Um, I'm certainly not a pessimist by any means. I mean, I've, been told that I'm um, too positive sometimes, where sometimes I'm not real realistic enough. And I think that's probably a trait of a lot of entrepreneurs. We're always trying to see the, the bright side of things. And, and uh, But here in Las Vegas, I just see how, how much we've been impacted by COVID-19. The Strip is completely a ghost town. Probably 100,000 people have been let go um, from, from all the casinos and hotels. Um, mm. and, and I just look at it as, okay, when they do allow people to go back to work and, and back to business. Um, that's going to be huge for all of us, but we're not going to just see a, 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 a flip of the switch and things just right. go back to normal. Right. I mean, think about what, what, what quarterly earnings reports are going to look like from these hotels, these airlines, these, these, these cruise lines. I mean, the quarterly earnings reports are going to be just terrible for the next quarter or two. So that's going to impact things. Um, I just think it's just going to be a choppy, a choppy year all the way around, just because it's just going to take a little bit of time for the machine to get ramped up. But, you know, we're resi- resilient. I, I know we'll come through. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, well, that's great. I, I, I share your optimism and uh, I would much rather be unrealistic when as a, as a byproduct of that sometimes. Uh, you have to be sometimes, yeah. I think. Yeah, you just got to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. That's that's that kind of attitude is what pulls us through these uh, you know tough times. Uh, so speaking of tough times, and you alluded to it before, uh, making mistakes. You know, we we talk about mistakes on every episode of the show. Um, we recently just published a, a small business pocket guide all about mistakes, and the, our guests that, that shared that. Um, you know, we like them because they teach us so much. And it's been looking back on them, what would you say is one of your best mistakes? One that stuck with you the most, and it really taught you a valuable lesson. Not focusing on culture enough. 
So because I've, I'm, I'm such a salesperson inside and out, you know, I've always just had the, the, the mentality of sales solve problems. I mean, I remember my first sales manager telling me that like sales solve problems, whatever problem you have in your life, sales solve it. So go get on the phone and make some money. Right. So that, that's how I was taught at a young age. And there, there's some truth in that, right? Sales do right. drive the shit and, and without sales, there's no business, but shoot with, without a culture, there's no business, right? Without operations, there's no business. So they, they all work hand in hand. And uh, I was guilty of not focusing on the culture first um, and, you know, really been making an intentional effort over the last, uh, shoot, I'd probably say the last year and a half, two years of, of really just focusing on culture um, and, and how we could instill the right kind of culture. Um, and, and that's been really, really huge. It's paid dividends because when we have experienced challenges like where we are today with COVID-19, um, because of our, our strong culture, we're, we're able to still pull through. We're able to still row the boat. Uh, we're able to still function as a business and, and keep moving forward to serving our clients. And um, so culture is just so, so important. And uh, there's been times where I've kept certain people around um, just because of the production. And, and uh, you know, I made that choice over the culture and it's costed me. So um, it, it's got to be culture first because that's that's the identity of the team. And, and that's how you get people to buy in. Yeah, I, I think that's some great advice coming from a, a top line sales guy like I am. I always have thought that too, at <laughs> at the expense of sometimes of this culture part of it. Uh, and I do think that's really great to be able to slow down. And and that's part of that transition, right? If you're a great hard driving salesperson and you want to create your own business and your company, you, you do have to shift into another role to protect, to build and then protect that culture. I think yeah. that's great. That's very cool. So w- what's the future hold for you and for, for Quest? Are, are you really focused on growth or are you still, you know, building out systems to support your existing customers? What's the next few years look like for you? Yeah, I think a combination of, of the two, right? I mean, you can't grow so big where your your systems and, and operations fall behind and, and they become archaic. Um, so it's, it's definitely keeping up um, with our systems and our efficiency and um, our, our bread and butter, our secret sauce really at the end of the day, though, is, is customer service is, you know, speaking to people is, is giving them love, not, not looking at them as just as a number, but looking at them as a, as a human, um, and knowing their situation inside and out and being able to have regular conversations with these people. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to somebody where, you know, the person that helped them with their retirement account, they haven't talked to them in two years. And the last time they talked to them two years ago was only to invest money. Um, and, and that's sad because at the end of the day, there's a lot of other ways to help people, um, and, and being able to, to speak with them, but you'll never know that unless you actually have a conversation with them. So just finding more ways to add more value to our existing clients is always, always huge. But then like any other business, it's, it's scaling, it's, it's growing, it's being able to identify some, some new ways to add more volume and add more clients, Um, but more importantly, it's, it's investing into the team and, and, you know, promoting people within the team and and giving them the skill set and the training to keep moving up. Because, you know, if if we have a a team that really enjoys what they do and and they buy into the mission and they truly believe without a doubt in their mind that they're helping somebody, they're going to give it their all. And, uh, they're going to make sure that, that people feel that through the phone, you know, energy is so huge. Energy transfers through the phone. People can feel it. Yeah. Well, we call it here, you know, we talk about business therapy a lot. And it sounds like, especially lately, you and your team are doing a lot of business therapy for small business owners. I was on the phone yesterday with a client for an hour and a half. (laughs) And uh, a lot of it had to do with just relatability. Um, I I had a child that 18 years old um, and uh, her, her mother and I aren't together and we haven't been together for a long time. So we've been doing the whole you know, raising a kid in, in two different households, two different parenting styles. And, uh, you know, I was just talking to, talking to my clients. She was just asking me questions and we were just, we were just talking and, uh, you know, I know she really, really appreciated it. And, uh, That's little great. things like that go a long yeah. way. I didn't make money on oh, that yeah. call, right? I didn't sell her anything, but, right. you know. I, yeah, I, but you, 
you reminded each other that you're human beings. And I, I feel like that is such an important thing, especially right now when we can't see each other face to face. Not that your business involves a lot of face to face, but, uh, you know, finding however you can do that with your clients now and in the future when we can get back together. But, you know, it's that 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 human contact, like you said, you can you can communicate a lot of energy over the phone. Uh, it that's important to remember because it doesn't always translate through email. In fact, it often yeah. does not. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, sure, that's for sure. And and I would argue that that's part of building wealth for your business, right? You have these customers mm. that become extremely loyal. To you. So wealth is it's a very broad term. It's not just about money. It's that culture you're building, Daniel. It's these customers that are you know, really loyal to you. And that person is going to remember that phone call for years or forever and, and drive business to you and, and reward you in all kinds of other ways. So I I think it's really cool. So before we wrap up, uh, I have one final question for you for small business owners that are really struggling right now. Maybe they don't have, you know, the capital they need, or they're, you know, they can't service their debt during tough times. What would you say is the single most important bit of advice that you could leave them with today? You know, what, what, what should they be focused on or what can they do? You know, two parts. One, I know that that defeats the purpose of your question, but I want to make sure that I can give value to everyone. Um, if you have an IRA or a 401k from a previous employer, um, reach out to me, reach out to my team and, and we could show you a different way to, to maybe look at that, that account from a different lens that can solve some of those cash flow issues that could help you restructure some of that high interest rate debt or, or get you some capital for your business to, to get you through everything. So um, that's number one. But number two, you know, whether you have money in a retirement account or not, um, I really, really think that focusing on your credit is just so important. Um, I would not have been able to start, you know, the, the business um, a few years ago if, if it wasn't for credit. Right. There's a difference between good debt and bad debt. Right. Bad debt is me using that money to go to Hawaii and spending a bunch of money out there, money that I'm not going to get back. Right. I don't get an ROI on that. But if I use my credit card and I use it for uh, a marketing campaign or I invest into a business development program or a training program or, you know, something to do with my business in some way, shape or form. Right. That, that that's a positive debt. Right. That, that's that's going into some kind of asset where at least I have a chance of making my money back. Um, right. But you don't get yourself in that spot if you don't have a good credit score. And uh, for me, I didn't have a good credit score when I was younger. Um, but luckily, I was able to kind of shape up along the way. And uh, having a good credit score is so important right now. There's probably a lot of people that were making silly decisions um, buying things that they couldn't afford leading up to 2020, getting into debt, not worrying about their credit score. And now they're stressed. They would love a loan sure. from the bank. They'd love a 0% yeah. interest rate credit card. They'd love an SBA loan. They'd love something. But shoot, right now, it's, it's, if you don't have credit, it's tough. Yeah. So, you know, there's going to be another down downturn. The, the economy does this, right? Every five, 10 years, there's just going to be a, some kind of contraction. Um, this isn't going to be the last time. So when this does happen, you want to make sure your credit is on point so you can make moves. That's great. I think that's great advice. Um, you know, Daniel, thank you again for, for coming on the show. What's the best way for our listeners to connect with you and to learn more about quest education? Yeah. The best thing to do would go to your quest.com. It's Y O U R quest Q U E S T.com. And, uh, there's a section contact us. Uh, fill out some basic information and then you can get on the phone with my team. And again, we're not on the phone to just give you a high sales, uh, high, high pressured sales pitch and, and sell you some stock or insurance product. It's just all about asking questions and, and finding out what challenges you're going through and, and what options are on the table that can help. And then um, if, if you want to follow me, um, I'm pretty active on Facebook. Uh, I do my best to make people laugh. Uh, hopefully inspire some people and then talk a little bit about the self-directed retirement account world and retirement accounts for business owners and just giving some education there. Uh, so you can find me in, in Las Vegas, Daniel Blue, B-L-U-E, like the color. Pretty sure I'm the only Daniel Blue in Las Vegas. Uh, so if you, if you see me there, feel free to, uh, to follow me. Great. We'll put a link in the show notes to your website, uh, as well as the the Facebook link and everything else. And, you know, thank you again for coming on. It's fascinating, really a great uh, look at 
not only creating your own business out of something that you've you know been doing for so long, but also just some, I think some great advice for small business owners that are looking at different ways to raise capital, pay off debt, and uh, you know create that system to build wealth. We really appreciate your time today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming. Man, I love this. I I love that his whole business is. I, you know, I'm a I'm a. I emotionally support all conspiracy theories. I can't intellectually <laughs> support them all, but I emotionally, yeah. like I cheer them all on. But I love that his whole thing is like his. I mean, his pitch, but also his business is founded on this whole thing. Like Wall Street is only going to do things that make Wall Street yeah. money, so they're not going to encourage you to do any of this stuff. Like that, that resonates with me. That's good. Yeah, yeah it makes totally makes sense, and yeah. and uh, it's such a different way. You know, I'm drawn to it because I've built my whole life uh, and built, you know, wealth around doing things differently than other people. Right. right. Uh, and, and not listening to this or not the status quo and you need to do this and do that. So that concept of, wow, you know, if you need an alternative way to raise capital and do this and pay down debt, I mean, it's just an interesting concept and he's just a, a heck of a nice guy and yeah. it's great to see him move from employee to employer and build his business. It's well, cool. and there, there was that, there was huge, I think that, the, and I, he doesn't see it this way because he's never seen it another way, but that whole, you, you know, uh, two-part sales process is something I really don't see adopted in most small businesses uh, because it's just not how entrepreneurs think. And and he's an entrepreneur yeah, for sure. I would agree. But his sales knowledge, his sa- the tr- his trust in the s- the system of sales comes from having been an employee, where he didn't have to make the risky decision of saying, oh, "Okay, yeah, that's like, a good point." That's bifurcate good point. the relationship, y- you know, because that's really yeah. risky. It, if you and we don't do that at Backbeat, and I'm wondering if we should, you know. But it's yeah, I, I'm somebody like you, you know, I'm a relationship guy. And yeah, to, you too. know, to think about passing the relationship off. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I've seen it's it hard. fail. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it's interesting. He has confidence yeah, and, and in it. Yeah. It, yeah, it does. And I loved his mistake. You know, his best mistake is, you know, not focusing on culture, focusing on sales. I've totally done that over and over and over. So Same. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this will, he, he will definitely be in the second edition of our uh, mistakes, small business pocket guide. And uh, if you don't know what that is, go to businessshow.co slash guides, businessshow.co slash guide. And that'll take you over to our first pocket guide for small business owners. It's all about mistakes. And we share over the last five years, all the guests that we've had on and all the different mistakes that they've talked about. And you'll hear me talk about my million dollar mistake, which is always fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fun now. <laughs> but now that it's like 15 years later, it's, yeah. it's a great lesson. It's yeah, all good. Always fun. Not at the time. Not at the time. Hey, but, uh, thanks know, for listening, okay. folks. We, uh, we appreciate it. All right, folks. Well, that's uh, that's it. Make sure you visit visit. Easy for me to say. Make sure you visit lino.com slash SBS to get that twenty dollar credit. That's a nice little path to leading that charmed life. We'll see you next time. Bye.